So you want to learn what the five typical mistakes that intermediate blues guitarists make? Well, hang out to find out. So I guarantee if you get on top of these typical mistakes, it will really make a big difference to your blues playing. So let's get on with it. Here is typical mistake number one. No, Big Jim, it doesn't mean not listening to you enough. Sorry, Big Jim. It's actually this. It's not following the root notes when you're following the changes. It's a dead simple thing to do, and it will make you sound like you're following the changes in a very solid and professional way, right? Now, what I mean is this. Let's say we've got a blues in A. So we've got A7, D7, E7, yeah? What I'm going to do is over that A chord across the first four bars, I'm going to sit heavily on an A note, right? And that will express the tonality of the chord. And when it changes to the D chord, I'm importantly going to play the D, the new root note, on beat one of when the D chord comes. Then I'm going to do the same with the A chord when it goes back, then the E, then the D. And I'm going to do this without a backing track so you can hear the changes. So it will go something like this. One, two, three, four. <laughs> So what I was doing there was I was very clearly playing the root note at the start of each chord. Now I don't have to do this absolutely every time, but if I keep coming back to this and doing this, it ties me into the chord progression. It's a really simple thing to do, but it makes a massive difference to your playing. And all I'm doing is I'm thinking of this A note here. Then when the D comes, I'm, I'm targeting that D note and then Back to the A note, E, D, A. So the little noodles in between aren't really as important as hitting those root notes because that solidifies my playing. And I can just noodle around, come back to the root note, noodle around, come back to the root note, and that will make my playing sound really strong. So that is tip number one. Tip number two is not getting your bends accurate. I hear this all the time from players. A lot of players just kind of bend a little bit randomly, right? Or even if they're trying to hit the note, they don't quite hit the note they're supposed to hit and it sounds weak. Now your bends have got to be accurate. When you're playing a note on the guitar, it's not like a violin. It's like you can't really get it wrong, you know? If you're playing that A note, if you go back a little bit or forward a little bit, it doesn't really matter, okay? But with a bend, it's got to be accurate, right? So you've got to work on your bends. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a little exercise to work on your bends to get you to do some accurate bends, right? Now, what we're going to do is we're going to bend up to this E note, right? And then we're going to release it and we're going to bend up to the flat five which is that note, which is an E flat. And that will sound like this. Right, now it's a little tweak, but your bending's got to be accurate to do this. And then I'm putting a quarter tone bend at the end. So within that little tiny exercise, I've done a bend that's a tone, I've done a bend that's a semitone, and I've done a bend that's half a semitone, a quarter of a, a tone. So I've really got all the main bends that I'm gonna do within that tiny little phrase. And it sounds mega cool because you've got a lot of variety in there. And I'm also varying the way I'm bending the note. This second bend, right? I'm releasing and then I'm bending up without picking again. which kind of makes the guitar sound like it's crying a bit, you know, if you like. And that gives your playing more quality. It's more interesting. It's more dynamic. You're nailing tons of things down with this. Number three is definitely one that I was guilty of for a while, and that's not using enough vibrato. I think my vibrato used to sound a bit like this. And now it sounds more like this. 
Now the difference is I'm just being a bit more aggressive. Now this happened because when I used to do my vibrato, I used to think it sounded a certain way, but it wasn't until I recorded myself and compared it with somebody else's vibrato that I thought mine was similar to, and I thought, mine isn't like theirs at all. Theirs is way more aggressive. So then I just went a bit heavier on my vibrato. <laughs> Basically, you've just got to shake that finger quite aggressively because you want your vibrato to stand out. I think it's much better to have a strong vibrato that stands out than a subtle vibrato that gets lost a little bit. Now for vibrato, this is another mistake that people make all the time. They use the wrong technique. The correct technique is to have the side of your knuckle there, your side knuckle, right, up against the side of the guitar. <laughs> Right, and you're using that as a pivot, not this. You're not using your finger so much to create the vibrato as your forearm, right? Your forearm's a big muscle, so you've got a lot of control with that. So you're twisting your arm, right? Not pulling your finger, right? You'll have a lot more control if you do it like this. All right, so that is intermediate mistake number three. Let's move on to intermediate mistake number four. Number four is one I see a lot, and that is not varying rhythms. So when you're soloing, a lot of intermediates or beginner to intermediates, they tend to solo a bit like this. And wonder why it doesn't sound very good. Now, part of the reason it doesn't sound very good is because they're using the same rhythm all the time. So an easy way to think of this is to speed up and slow down. So there, I'm going fast, slow. So that's the easiest way to think of it. You can also think of it in eighth notes and triplets. So I could go. So I've gone from triplets to eighth notes. So changing your subdivisions from eighth notes to triplets to sixteenth notes is really helpful. I remember I had one student who would just go, he's just putting triplets all over the place. If I didn't watch what he was doing, I said, you got into triplet mode again. It was just like triplet after triplet. And you go, oh yeah, I'm doing that triplet thing again. You need to switch your rhythms around. So you can think fast, slow, fast, slow. Or if you want to get a bit more advanced, think about your subdivisions. So now let's get on to mistake number five. Mistake number five is another big one, and that is not muting properly. If you don't mute properly, it doesn't matter what you do, it's not gonna sound good, because notes are gonna ring out when you don't want them to. So when I go, I'm controlling a lot of this with my hand here. You can hear that is muted with my right hand. That isn't. So it's like mute, 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 let go, mute. Now as a general rule, you should mute the, the E string, the A string and the D string, the wound strings, and let the unwound strings ring out a bit more. And this works well because, for example, for this phrase, it's that minor third, which has got that, I said it in the last video, that snarly sort of a sound. And I want I want that to jump out. I want that to be dynamic. So the high strings, you want to kind of, you want those to jump out and the lower strings to be maybe a little bit more rhythmical. But even that, when I'm playing that, it sounds clean because my fingers are lifting off very quickly and I'm not doing stuff like um, things like that where you can hear notes ringing together because it's dissonant. I'll just roll roll down to get rid of that dissonance. So I'm very careful when I'm playing that I'm not holding down two or three notes together uh, when I'm doing solos because I know that it will create dissonant sounds. Now sometimes you might want that sound. Yeah, but a lot of the, more often than not, you don't. So generally I, I, I mute maybe, maybe a bit more than I should do because I don't want those dissonant sounds, right? If you get on top of all those five techniques, it will make a massive difference to your playing. It's really icing on the cake stuff. So don't forget to check me out on Patreon. 
link below. Lots of people have been signing up recently. Some really great stuff on there. I expand on all my lessons on YouTube, on Patreon, in a lot more depth and in more detail. So do check that out. Always like and subscribe. It's super important. Really helps the channel. Catch you next time.